Welcome to Profinet for Machine Builders. You know the problem. Product life cycles continue to shorten and you need to be able to respond to customer requirements even faster, which is why it makes sense to modularize your machines. But carrying out changes and innovations could mean having to perform updates on multiple projects. I'd like to present to you a function in the TIA portal that will optimize your variant management, resulting in serious savings of time and money. But how? Allow me to demonstrate. Our demo wall is equipped with four machine modules. For measured data collection, for handling, for material infeed, and for labeling. We use an S7-1500 as the controller. The power supply comes from the PSU-8600, and the visualization is done with a panel PC. For the configuration and engineering, I used the TIA Portal V13 SP1. What does that mean for you as a machine builder? Customer 1 orders options 1 and 2, Customer 2 orders options 3 and 4, and Customer 3 orders options 1 and 4. As a result, each project needs to be adjusted individually. Option handling in the TIA portal makes it possible to manage these multiple variants in just one project. Let's take a quick look at the actual project. A single project in the full configuration will suffice. And now I choose the ET200MP as an optional device in this configuration. Under Advanced Settings, I see that Optional I.O. Device has been selected. This informs the TIA portal that we consider the hardware configuration of the ET200MP as an option. But to be able to easily select my option on the panel PC during the commissioning phase later, further adjustments must be made to the user program. To do this, I'll create a new function block. I open the individual software components of the CPU. Then I create a new function block. For the programming language, I select the function block diagram. The folder Distributed I.O. is displayed in the library section of the program editor. The function Reconfigurable I.O. system is required to activate option handling. The function block is controlled via the control record variable. I control this variable with a data block. As you can see, I've already prepared this data block. As we can see, all the required variables have been properly predefined. The variable data set reconfig option 1, option 2, and option 3 in an array tell the user program which option I want to configure. So how does our FB work? First, all I.O. devices are deactivated. Via the variable optional I.O. device, I can either activate or deactivate my option. As the function block is launched, the data set is read and my option is activated. To be able to control everything conveniently using the panel, I linked the variable directly to the faceplate. I have my two configured options here, the full expansion phase and the option without our material infeed, the ET200MP. Next, I'll activate the maximum machine configuration. The CPU then restarts its program and all options are activated accordingly. All that's left now is to issue the safety acknowledgement. Now the machine is ready for use. During commissioning, it's important to remove the material infeed, in this case, the ET200MP, according to customer wishes. To do this, I select the associated option. Do some rewiring to bypass the ET200MP and repeat the safety acknowledgement process.
As you can see, the machine is ready for use. But there's more to our option handling. Centralized and decentralized option handling make it possible for us to deactivate or activate individual modules in an I.O. device. To make this happen, here's what I do in the TIA portal. In the hardware configuration, shown here in our example with the ET200SP, I activate the checkbox Enable Reconfiguration of the Device via User Program in the Module Parameters section. Within the User Program, a function block is provided read, write, and record, and this is used to activate or deactivate the option. I've saved this variable too, on our panel. To make a selection, I do the following. First, I choose the decentralized option handling and activate the option I've just configured. And as we see here, even if the module is removed, the station continues to work without complications. Now that we've seen how we can optimize variation management, I'd like to show you another way to shorten the commissioning phase for the customer. Generally, you have to integrate your machine into a predefined address range at the customer's site. For you, this means that all IP addresses of all devices in the project have to be adapted accordingly. With Profinet, you can assign a start address to the CPU and it will automatically overwrite the IP addresses of your devices within the project. Now you have various possibilities. Option 1, the CPU's web server. Option 2, the S7-1500 display. Option 3, the TIA portal. Last but not least, you have our Proneta commissioning and analysis tool. To be able to use the automatic addressing feature, I need to implement certain settings in the TIA portal. In the device and network view, I mark the PLC's I.O. system. The highlighted dashed line shows the I.O. system. I right-click on Properties and check Multiple Use I.O. System. In doing this, I grant the TIA portal permission for the CPU to overwrite all IP addresses of the assigned I.O. devices. Now let's take a look at Proneta. With Proneta, you basically have three options. The network analysis, the I.O. test, and adjusting general settings in Proneta. With the I.O. test, I can switch variables, inputs and outputs, without a force table and also simulate circuit breaks and other situations requiring diagnostics. Within the network analysis, Proneta scans the network and allows me to use all Profinet devices that are in my network. On the left side, Proneta shows me a topological view of my existing system. On the right-hand side, associated information on the device's name, IP address, and other parameters that I can view with a simple right-click. We're now at the customer's site and would like to adjust the machine as required. To do this, I select the CPU's IP address, select my address range, and then change it to the customer-defined values. The IP address is now set for the CPU. As we can see, Proneta set all the associated devices to the 35 range once the start address for the CPU had been entered. This aligns the entire machine and the entire I.O. system with the customer's IP range. But Proneta has even more to offer. In addition to the topological analysis of my machine, I can also arrange for other functions to be displayed. Export lists. Or easily identify devices by configuring LED lights to flash. Today I demonstrated how you can optimize your variant management with our option handling function and how you can shorten the commissioning phase for customers with our free Proneta tool. Further information regarding application examples and how to download our free Proneta tool can be found on our website.